Okay, we left off 64. Okay, page 64. Page 60 of Chobol, so it's on the very bottom. Vacha ki netak mi Chobol seivorim el mashi ishbo masib levod. We're going from one's involvement in his physicality. We said the concepts, when you express, you study Torah, that allows one's emotion, one's intellect to internalize the concepts when you express it, when you teach Torah. And it creates a consciousness. This is the concept of Shivisi Hashem Nagi Somit. Now we're talking about just the physical act. This is divided into three parts. You should tie it as a sign on your arm, so that's a physical act. No It should be totofos beinecho. So what is this referring to? Hey, tefila shal yad. That's the tefillin of the yad. Tefila shal rosh. Hamezuzah. V'chulam gormim liskor sabore. All three cause one that we should have a cognizance of Hashem. Hashem's presence. Ulavo b'leiv sholim. And this allows us to bring the love to a complete level. To love Him with a full heart. V'lich soflo. And to... Yearn, yearn for him. Okay. It's a question. I'm not saying two mitzvahs. Where is it? Okay, so it's two parts. Two parts being one mitzvah. Now it's interesting. The Ramchal writes. Writes, you know, it's interesting. He says, there's a mitzvah zech and tzis mitzram. That's what we say in the third paragraph of the Shema. What happened to us in Egypt? We became, we became very much negatively affected. Not, it wasn't just physical bondage. Exposed to that level of impurity of Egypt. And that, that's what Yaakov was concerned about. We go there, we're going to become spiritually infected. And therefore, the Yitzis Mitzrayim was more than just physically take us out of the land. It was, it was a spiritual purging. It was a spiritual detoxification detox, of the effect. So the Ramchal writes in the, in the Das Tfunos that when you say the third paragraph of Shema, he says, and you have in mind, Hashem took us out of Egypt, what Egypt was, and has an effect on you that you'll have a greater capacity to process spirituality. That Hashem took us out of that, uh, whatever impure location, and took us out. It affected us, you know, positively. And when you have that in mind, it affects you in that in that same vein. That you have a greater capacity for spirituality. So also, so saying it has an effect. It, similarly, here we said, by doing the physical action, it secures the ava. When we speak, we speak the Torah. It allows us to internalize it. It causes It allows it to become more in, 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 ingrained, embedded, absorbed into our hearts, into our emotion. The whole concept of internalization is very difficult. I'm, so he's giving you uh, many, you know, many. The, the Shema is telling us exactly how to internalize it. You know, like Pippa says, I get it. Getting it is not enough to get it. You have to understand it, and you have to internalize it. Uh, un uh, internalizing it, it becomes part of your perspective of, of who you are and what you are. We speak about a person who's, you know, what's the difference between a Talmud Chochem and a Torah scholar? Right? Mm -hmm. Right? Mara says, a Talmud Chochem is Tocho Kebaro. Right? The Oron was made of gold, and when the Torah speaks about the gold of the Oron, it says it was coated in gold, cast in gold on the inside and the outside. So the Mar says in Yuma, what, and what was the Oron? It was the receptacle which held the, the, the Torah, the Luchos, the Shivri Luchos, and the Torah itself. So the Gemara says, called Tamachochem, Shein Torah Kabaro in Tamachochem. A Tamachochem whose inside is not the equivalent of his outside, he's not a Tamachochem. What, what does that mean? That means you have to be as genuine on the inside. What do you mean genuine? 
It means it's, it's, it's been internalized. It's been internalized. It's not only you're going through motions, you have knowledge and you know about it, but it's actually it becomes ingrained, intertwined in, in your being. That's tochu kebaru. That, that's what we're talking about. So that's the internalization of the knowledge that you've studied. That's a Talmud Chochem. So it, we've got a Torah sage. Torah sage is not just the person who's proficient in the whole Torah, instant recall. It's much more than that. If that knowledge has been actually absorbed, internalized, and therefore it's, it, it becomes the person himself. There's, not, there's no me and that. It's one and the same. The driving, the motivating factor is the Torah that the person possesses. No, everybody has the Yetzirah. But it, the Yetzirah of a tzaddik is not the Yetzirah of an ordinary person. It could be envy. It could be you, application of knowledge, making them think misevaluation because of a conflict of interest. But it's not you can eat not kosher. Or you can do something wrong. That's, that's not the test of the tzaddik. <coughs> He'll be distracted. He'll have an interest. He may make a comment which is flattery, which he shouldn't have made that comment to somebody. You're not permitted. The Gemara says there was uh, one Tana that um, his wife had a dream and she had dreamt that her husband didn't decompose, but he had a, a, a worm ate through his ear, bore through his ear. And she, she was very upset. Her husband was supposed to be a holy man. Said, why? So the husband came to dream to the wife told him the reason why the worm was able to bore through his ear was because he once heard a disparaging remark somebody had made to another Talmud Chochem and he remained silent and he did not react to that remark. Yeah? And therefore, that was the punishment. So because his ear was deficient, because it heard that remark and disparaging and did not respond to it, to criticize it, that's why he, he, was, he was actually, that was his deficiency. So that, that was the representation of the, the worm the maggot boring through his ear. It's more above Mitzir. I'll tell you, I just heard uh, something was in, you know, in Israel. So it was an event. So a certain person, uh, I'm not going to mention name, is a politician, comes over to uh, Ira Rennet at this, this, this celebration. And he says to Ira Rennet, he says, you know, it happens to be the mayor of, of, of Jerusalem. Okay? Jerusalem. And... Um, he says to Irenet, he says, um, never goes with, a, with his yarmulke. He came, everybody wore a yarmulke, he came without a yarmulke. Not, not even a kippah. Forget about a yarmulke. Okay? So um, he says to me, he says, you know, they, once he had to go see Rebel Yoshif, he said, to, he said, and it's not Loshan Hara, for many reasons, what I'm saying now. So he says to uh, Ira Renet, he says, they said when you go to Rebel Yoshif, make sure to go with your head covered. That's what they tell him, you know, because he never goes with his head covered. So he said to them, and he's, he's boasting, he says, so he says, why? Because it's not respectful, because he represents something. So when you go to him, you go to, you go, like you go to Rome, you dress like a Roman. He didn't use that, but I'm saying that. So he says, you know what I said to them? If I have to go to Rebbe Yoshua with my head covered, that means when Rebbe Yoshua comes to me, he has to come bareheaded. You have, you have the comment. I felt like throwing up. You know, and afterwards, but I didn't say anything. That's why I'm mentioning it, w the story now with the with the with the, the worm, the maggot boring through the air. I didn't say anything to him, you know. And I said to him, I said, you know, you're not fit to kiss the ground that Rebel Yoshev walked on. And this is the way he told about Rebel Yoshev. When you, he comes to you, he should come bareheaded to you, because because of who you are. You know, what what do you think you are? Who do you think you are? What are you? You know. Just saying, that's what I'm telling you with the story. I've been doing sure since. Whatever it is. Yeah, doesn't make a difference. If David would have been there, he definitely would have said something. But David, David is very, no, it's politically astute. David would have been drinking glass one next time. He would have spilt it on him. And that would have stopped it immediately.
Rob. Yeah.